college prep physics, looking at series and parallel circuits, and certainly going into a little bit of math related to that. And uh, these are based on a bunch of relationships on series and parallel circuits developed by um, Gustav here, um, who lived until 1887. So this is not new, not new stuff. Um, first of all is defining a series in a parallel circuit. In a series circuit you've got some sort of power source and from that um, the electrons have only one place to go. Okay, And they follow through. In this case we have three motors in our circuit. So all the electrons that leave the power source go through every single motor. In this case, load. Every single load. And uh, looking at a parallel circuit there's, there's opportunities, there's differences. So in a parallel circuit the electrons come out here and then at this point they get split. Some of them come through this motor and some of them go this way, right? And then here some of them go this way and some of them go that way. And so, um, you know, the, the electrons can take different paths from each other. And there's benefits to each type and hopefully you get a feeling of that, um, not only by the end of the lesson, but by the time you've done, <coughs> excuse me, some of the uh, labs or, or textbook questions. Um, Oh yeah, so here's here's what I wanted to show you basically. So the electrons, all the electrons, and just you might may or may not remember, or I may or not may not have told you that uh, when you have a, just by convention the the drawing of the power source, all the electrons come out of the uh, the short end of the battery or the picture. Okay, and so we always think of the electrons are moving in this direction, or in this case, all the electrons are moving in this direction. And so what I've done here is just tried to throw, show the three different paths: purple, green, or or blue, and they can choose which one. Whereas on the series circuit, there's no choices. Um, so, a couple things. When we think about, um, you know, if I use the term um, energy to define instead of volts, which isn't precisely correct, but the idea in these, all these pictures here are little voltmeters added to my circuit. Okay, that's all these are. So, these aren't necessarily a path for electrons to follow, though kind of they are, um, but what they are is they're just, it's, these are here just to measure voltage, that's all that's saying. And so, and the IT is the total current in the circuit, I1, I2, and I3. Um, this means it's measuring the current, imagine you can measure the current at every spot. And so this is the first motor, the second motor, the third motor. And so what this tells me is that the, and I say energy added, volts and energy are not exactly the same, but it's a good, good enough. The energy you add at the power source is going to be equal to the sum of all the energy used at each part of the circuit. So the amount of energy, this is measuring the amount of energy used by that motor. And that's the amount of energy used by that one, and that's the amount of energy used by that one. So if you know those three numbers, that's the sum of that is, is your total, total voltage for the circuit. And I guess that's what, there you go, <laughs> in a, in a, it's quite simply in a series circuit. And that's only, by the way, in a series circuit, okay? In a series circuit, energy added at the source equals the energy used at the loads. Um, now with current, it's different because, and you may have done this lab, but if you measured current at all different points in the circuit, you would realize that the current never changes. And again, if you think about current as being sort of the rate, how fast they move, well, if things got slowed down because of a lot of resistance through this motor, then this the current, the rate of electron flow would be slow everywhere. It would hold up the whole circuit, right? So when you measure the current, it's going to be the same no matter where you are in the circuit, okay? So if you know the current here coming out, if you put your ammeter right here, for example, then you could assume that if that measured 2 amps, then it's 2 amps throughout the whole circuit. And the rate of, and so again, a series circuit, the rate of, of electron flow stays constant. Oh, this is a very common question. Um, if you had a series circuit and you moved one of the bulbs, say it was bulbs instead of motors, but I could say motors, say something blue, and it wasn't the, the circuit was basically what would happen is if uh, right here, say the motor broke and I pulled it out, or an easier picture is a light bulb, because actually if the light bulb blows, then the path of the electrons actually gets gets hindered. So if this one goes out, they all go out. None of them are going to work because you've re you've taken away the path. You need a closed path for electrons to follow. And without and without that closed path, if something breaks in the circuit somewhere on a series circuit, the whole thing the whole thing stops. 
Okay, uh, a parallel circuit, of course, here's the picture. Um, it's a different story. The voltage added at the source, <coughs> if you measured the volts here or here or here, they're all the same, which is different, right? Because, it, and this is where using the term volts or like energy doesn't quite make sense because if I added 100 joules, you know, clearly if these are all the same motors, you'd think that energy would be, would be um, split. And, and that, in fact, is true. But remembering that voltage is energy per coulomb, which is really energy per electron. So every electron in this circuit has the same amount of energy. Every electron in the circuit has the same amount of energy. So, so uh, you know, there's fewer electrons because what happens at these points, these are called junction points. What happens is the current comes through, some of it goes this way, some of it goes that way. But those electrons are still excited. They still have the same energy. The amount of electrons, there might be fewer electrons going through this motor, but they all have the same amount of energy, whether they're here or here or here, right? Because none of that energy got used prior, right? So when the electrons that go through this motor, when they get here, like this is the first load they've seen, right? Because they would come out through here, down here, down here. So they're still just as energetic, but there's just fewer of them. And that's the difference between a series and a parallel circuit. Um, so the voltage is the same. The current is not. The current is different because the current gets split. Um, yeah, here's just the picture. So, so the language that we say is, um, is that the energy that gets used on any single loop is the same. Right? So in this circuit, the voltage around the yellow is the same as the voltage through the green is the same as the voltage through the blue. And by closed loop, that's what I mean. So the energy I add here per electron is the same for all three. Okay, uh, just another, just a quick thing. Based on that same logic, though, <coughs> um, you know, if I think about VT, so I said earlier, like VT equals V1, and that's still true in this circuit. VT equals V2, that's still true. What's different is, see, these two are in series with each other, three and four. So these two, because remember, some of the, my volt, say it was 10 volts. So I said every, every electron had sort of 10 joules worth of energy, which is not quite true. But um, then, you know, some of that's going to get used here, say five, then five is going to get used here. Or four gets used here, then six will get used here. But these two would add up to, because they're in series. But, you know, they're going to be the same as V2. They're sum. They'll be the same as V2, which will be the same as V1 and same as VT. Um, so with current on a parallel circuit, just keeping in mind that junction point, the idea is that because the current gets split, so at this point, at this junction point, um, they get split. Some of the current comes this way, some of it goes that way, and some goes that way. If I measured my current here, here, and here, and say it was one amp each, then IT must be three amps because it got split evenly. Not always does it get split evenly. If something has, if this load has a lot more resistance than that load, then more current will come through here than here. Okay, and the, the, I guess this is the explanation of what I'm saying. What comes in equals what comes out of every junction point. It's just, it's just how fast the electrons go. Okay, so looking at an example problem with a series circuit, say I want to find, and this is a common thing, is to see these circuit questions where you're trying to find stuff, right? So if I know that IT was 2 amps, and my VT was 120 volts, right? And I measured my volts here, and it was 20. And I measured my volts here, and it was 40. I, and I'm looking for all my other currents and volts. Well, first of all, in a series circuit, you can say, well, they're all equal. The current doesn't change, so the current's all 2 amps. So all these three we know, they're all 2 amps. And then to find this voltage, you have to remember that this one plus this one plus this one equal VT, right? So you can solve for, for V1. I'm going to stop this 10-minute video. I'm going to stop it, and we'll have part two of this video coming up.